Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We have got what we hope you guys will appreciate very much because Julie and I, between the two of us, have probably spent five or six hours preparing the next four podcasts. And the reason we had to spend so much time on it is because we knew nothing about it. Now, of course, in the real estate world, if you spent five or six hours on something, you can now call yourself an expert. Probably, yeah. Probably get a designation and some letters, too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, this is going to be about the metaverse. And this we're going to go through next week talking about the metaverse. But specifically what we're doing is we're making it so that it, it's a, I think, an easily understood explanation of what the metaverse is combined with how it's going to be relevant to your real estate business. Because what most people are going to do is they're going to be spinning the pot and trying to make you be fearful of it. And what we're here to tell you in our combined, now generally speaking, we're optimistic about most things in life. Mm -hmm. But in this particular stance, I think after you hear the points that we're going to give you, and there's 10 points, that you will feel optimistic as well because what this will create at the end of the day, mm -hmm. or more places for you to, uh, you know, sell real estate and make money. So we're going to be sharing with you all the little nitty gritty, pit, uh, pity, you know, nitty things over the next few days. But we're going to start out assuming that you guys are as ignorant ab about the uh, metaverse as we were a whole five days ago. Yes. So this is both <laughs> off the menu, interesting, new material. I think a lot of you guys are going to want to take some notes, type, get your typing fingers out. Certainly pay attention. We've gone over this several times. And again, this is new to probably almost all of you. And our job, as always, is to educate, motivate, and get you into action. We're going to start with the educate part. What is this metaverse thing all about? And then we'll move on to the rest. It is important you understand that anybody that's – we're making fun of ourselves and hopefully you guys can <laughs> understand. But I'll give you a, a funny story. I think I actually mentioned this on the podcast the other day. I had somebody come up to me. And uh, was telling me about the, you know, blockchain and NFTs and cryptocurrency and all that. Julie and I live in Dorado, Puerto Rico. And if you don't know where Dorado, Puerto Rico is, um, well, it's obviously in the middle of the, the British, uh, British South Pacific. The West Indies in the, in the Caribbean. But you guys, some of you, most of you in know where San nowhere. Juan is, right? So yeah. a thousand miles south of Miami. There you go. Right. Well, so here in Dorado, believe it or not, is the crypto, Bitcoin, NFT, blockchain center of the universe. And so stumbling across somebody who knows a lot more about this than we do is quite easy. You know, we just walk out our front door. But it was funny because I'm having this conversation with somebody who, you know, people said, well, go talk to this guy. And so I was talking to him. We actually ran to him in the gym. And he was explaining all this stuff to me. And most of it was frankly sounding like bullshit and then i asked him because remember this was an nft expert i asked him so when did you first learn about nfts and the answer just sort of like i thought was hilarious he said about six months ago <laughs> <laughs> nft being non-fungible token right we're which we're going to talk about around. which we're going to talk about yeah. a little bit today but again um we're not going to make this overly complicated and we're not going to try to make ourselves seem like we're experts because again we're not but by the way nobody is um, and so as we go through these points, just keep in mind it's okay to feel blissfully ignorant uh, because this is the wild, wild west. And, uh, yeah, so without any further delay, yeah, Julie, right. let's start out because really there's nothing more to talk I about. Right? It's okay to go, what? That's all right. Well, you can rewind. We I, did that several times ourselves. Of all the topics that I've researched in the past probably five years of doing this podcast, uh -huh. this was without a doubt the most uh, challenging. I agree. Because I, I kept on stumbling across all these things where I had to, like, my my immediate mindset was no way that sounds like utter and complete bs right but but i couldn't like <laughs> just rest on my laurels because maybe i would have thought the same thing back in uh you know 1994 95 when someone was talking about the internet that's for sure you know and you and i were very early adopters <laughs> and we bought our our url in the scheme of things so they started selling urls in 1997 our url was basically late 1997 early 1998 so Julie and I have no problem whatsoever of being early adopters, um, and that was the URL being timandjulieharris.com. It's an ancient URL in the internet world. And so what we're dealing with now is the hypothetical uh, emergence, and, and again, we're going to give you the breakdowns here, 
of what will be an evolution of the next phase. They're calling it Web 3.0 of uh, the Internet. So, Julie, without any further yes. delay, what is right. this metaverse? Let's figure this thing out. All right. What is the <laughs> metaverse? That is M-E-T-A-V-E-R-S-E, -E -E, metaverse. The metaverse can be defined as a simulated digital environment that uses augmented reality, sometimes abbreviated AR, virtually virtual reality or VR and blockchain along with concepts from social media to create spaces for rich user interaction mimicking the real world. Now the fact that it takes that much of an explanation <laughs> means that we have to dive deeper but it mentioned that it uses blockchain so what is blockchain? That is defined as a system in which a record of transactions made in either Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained across several computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. Well, so just going back to this yeah. first line when I wrote that, mm -hmm. um, the point of that first line was to put in enough triggers so that people could sort of follow along, right? Sure. So people conceptually know what AR is. They know what VR is. If they have little kids, the kids probably have Oculuses or right. hell, they might play video games mm -hmm. using, you know, virtual reality certainly. headsets. So now you're kind of following along. And then, I, you know, we've put in the word social media and you guys certainly know what that is. So now it's starting to piece and part itself together. So what um, the metaverse essentially is going to do is take all that and put it into one consistent experience. So, Julie? Yes. Yeah, so over the next few years, the metaverse could become a literal parallel universe. I know we're talking crazy here, right? But just stay with us. It could become a, a parallel universe, or perhaps there are many different metaverses, and you will virtually go from one metaverse to another. Metaverse is a term. It's not a company name. The metaverse may be what will become known as Web 3.0. So if the metaverse is becoming Web 3.0, how would you define Web 1.0 and Web 2.0? Just to sort of uh, lace all of these things together, right? So Web 1.0 is kind of what you were referring to when we had our original URL. It's really the first stage or the iteration of the internet. And there were not a lot of content creators. Most internet users were consumers. And it was characterized by few people creating content and more people on the internet consuming that content. This was a simple model based mainly on just looking or viewing that content. And yes, DARPA uh, helped create the internet. And yes, there was military applications. What we're referring mm -hmm. to as we go through these different phases is um, the consumer internet. So please be clear, those of you who are far more knowledgeable than us, if we get anything wrong, mm -hmm. uh, forgive us. And maybe you can correct us in the comments if you're watching on YouTube so we can get all these facts straight. But That's it is right. the history of this is what, it's interesting. You know what I remember about that? Because, it's interesting and very yeah. recent. That's what's yeah. really interesting. Well, and you and I knew, knew each other back then, of course. Of course. It was before we were married. And I, I'm sure you remember when your dad was first dialing up and you had all the bing, bing, Julie, bings, right? We weren't. We were married then. No, this was before we were married because I remember. You're talking you, about high school. Yeah, because yeah. You're, you said something like, yeah, you know, my dad can get online in like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what's that mean? And then my dad started getting in, online. And this was very early days. So that was Web 1.0. 1.0 when it was pretty basic and there was a ton of content you know you'd go there and just read stuff well it was, it was so. mostly like um, they call them forums and things like that sure, I remember where that. you would post something up and then someone would post something and then you'd post something and post something and it was essentially that's the way it worked this was well before things like wikipedia and stuff like that really remembering all this stuff just makes you feel sort of nostalgic <laughs> but at the same Old. time it also makes you feel sorry that you actually had to deal with that experience seriously it was so terrible oh you know what millennials would never deal with that now Okay, so what's Web 2.0? Well, that started being used as a term around 1999, and it is the internet that we've all grown accustomed to using today. In Web 2.0, content consumers were encouraged to become content creators. Rather than taking a passive approach to the internet use by simply viewing, Web 2.0 provided an environment where more users could become more active participants. Most, if not all, of the top 10 visited sites today are based on user-created content. And we're going to give you a list of the top 10 yeah. sites um, next. So Web 2.0 allowed individuals to publish articles, comments. And by the way, this is from MSN. Yes. I thought using MSN was a great source considering it stands, stands for Microsoft Network, right? <laughs> right. Web 2.0 allowed individuals to publish articles and comments and, uh, and users could create accounts on different sites, which ultimately encouraged participation and increased the number of people regularly using the Internet. 
Web 2.0 was structured in a way that it encouraged more people to create unique content. This is all, a, you know, essentially a walk down history lane, if but you were. It should start to feel familiar at this point, though. That's right. And so then you see the rise of apps and you see the rise of self-publishing websites like WordPress. Some of you guys might remember when uh, blogging was a big thing. What was mm -hmm. the name of that uh, website that Jonathan Washburn Active created? Active Rain. Active Rain mm -hmm. was really great. Um, you know, this is back when blogging was supposed to be the killer app for real estate agents. You know, those these are all essentially children of Web 2.0, offspring of Web 2.0. Uh, and then you had the big social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, obviously YouTube. And uh, then these websites emphasize user-created content, participation, user-friendly layouts. Essentially, this was really the start of the consumer internet, really the, I'd say, the, uh, the, the maturing of the consumer internet. And then you can also then think of all the retail that spawned during uh, Web mm -hmm. 2.0. As people became more comfortable, I, again, I don't want to make us sound older than we are because we're, we're 50. But participatory, really. There was a time when you would you never in a billion years would have thought anybody would have bought anything off the internet. I remember when Amazon, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. first came around people were like why would you want to buy a book from the internet you know mm -hmm. i mean that was a that was the headline and people were sort of making fun of jeff bezos and now he's the largest retailer right. in the world i think he's the second person uh, richest person in the history of humanity i mean you yeah. know what but I'm back saying? then you're like you're really putting your credit card line online exactly. are you seriously typing that well but in in the defense of of those those naysayers the technology was not really protecting there was no SSL and you know advanced forms That's of right. security back then, so yeah, mm -hmm. it was kind of risky. It was for sure, and it, you know, obviously that's something that's gotten a lot better. So, Web uh, 2.0 is the transition that the internet went through after the dot com bubble, but the internet is once again in the process of transitioning. This new stage of the internet will provide new benefits to users and content creators. So. Moving on to Web 3.0. Now, before we get to Web 3.0, this is the reason that Web 3.0, there's many, 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 many reasons uh, that the Web 3.0, or maybe, you know, the metaverse is probably what it will be referred to as. There's many reasons why, essentially, people are wanting this um, technology. And it goes all the way from, you're hearing sometimes, you guys, if you pay attention to mass media, you know, Julie and I glance at CNBC looking for Diana Olick articles every day. And just today, there were two articles on how there's this big generation of people that are quitting their jobs. What if you read the article, they're not really quitting their jobs. The mat, what is it called? The great resignation. Mm -hmm. That's all kind of just a bunch of BS to grab headline or grab eyeballs to read the article. What it really is are people that are starting to demand that they're going to work at jobs that allow them to work remotely. So this is the uh, uh, the next, I think it's going to be more of a trend that companies in order to get really high quality people are going to want to uh, make it so they can work wherever the hell they want to work from in the world, be it an RV or, you know, be it a boat or someplace in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And that's what, that's how all this is going to evolve. But now, so you got to think, okay, if people are going to start working remotely and now you're also seeing the advancement of the technology, internet speeds, and all the stuff, you know, Starlink, we talk about a lot on this show, all of these things in addition to consumer demand. So before, technology did not meet consumer demand. In other words, people may have wanted it, but there was no way of delivering it. Now you're having a lot of people want it, not just the nerds and the geeks that want it. God bless all of you. Mm -hmm. We're nerds and geeks too. Not just the, you know, the minority of people want this technology now, but now you're going to have the masses want it because of, for example, the reason I just gave you. And you have technology that's now able to deliver it. So you're having a convergence of things that are incredibly rare in human history, and they're happening incredibly fast. And what we're going to do is we're going to get to, again, a later uh, tomorrow, next day, we're going to start telling you exactly what your, I'll use a nerdy term, interface or interaction will be with uh, the metaverse, how you're going to experience it, what it's literally going to feel like, not just look like, feel, as in you're going to use all of your senses and experience the metaverse in this, again, I know I'm maybe going ahead of my skis for a few of you. I was as I was going through all this. But in the reality, in Web 3.0, data will be connected in a decentralized way. Unlike uh, Generation 2.0 of the Internet, which data was primarily stored in centralized locations, in Web 3.0, users will be able to interact with data through the use of AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning technology. Some of you will refer to it as AI. The use of AI will allow data to be stored, uh, provided to users faster, and the data will be provided in a more relevant way more relevant to each user. We are beginning to see the use of this technology in the internet through algorithms that are being used as products, videos, et cetera, 
to uh, users based on their previous searches. And again, this is something, if you think about it, the AI, AI bots, like this or don't like this, have been studying you and know more about you than you could possibly imagine. Just assume everything I'm saying is not science fiction, it's science fact. So it, uh, there are essentially uh, storage, let's just call them databases, that have been watching and reading your email. Google, you have no privacy, right? They've been looking for keywords. And if you've been using any kind of smart home devices, chances are those things have been learning a little bit about you as well. Mm -hmm. All of your uh, interactions with anybody online, including AI online, is all going into a centralized database. And they're learning about you. They're learning your speech patterns. They're learning how you talk, learning how you think. They know what time you wake up. They know that you're, you know, the old thing where someone was saying, um, I found out my wife was pregnant when I was going online, when I was basically on my normal websites and I kept on seeing Amazon show me ads for, you know, uh, diapers, thick, and wipes. diapers and wipes because the wife was doing searches and she hadn't told her husband. I mean, yeah, so, well, so this has been going on a long time. I remember mm -hmm. when Zoe was little, I read an article about how the store Target was very much, um, you know, connected to this and they would actually send you coupons in the mail once they figured out what you were looking for. Right. They would find you and say, oh, well, you must be expecting or you must have a toddler. Here's some coupons for that. So here's how funny our family is, just on an aside. So we have an eight-year-old <laughs> and we have two middle-aged people, Julie and myself, and then we have an 82-year-old. Yes. And so trust me when I tell you the AI bots that are trying to understand the nature of the people that live behind <laughs> our uh, IS, you know, live behind our particular internet IS P and all the rest of it, we're you really confusing the hell out of it. Yes. And the ads that Julie and I see on any particular day are hilarious. Whatever my mom's searching for, yep. whatever, you know, Julie's searching for for Zoe and whatever Julie's searching for, we, seeing those ads and seeing, you know, this. And then there's your car hobby. Yeah. Seeing the AI bots trying to really understand these people are crazy. They're nuts. We're going to give up. <laughs> They're searching for Geritol at the same, you know, for my mom. And Barbies too. And Barbies. How's that same, work out? Anyway. Yes. Yeah. So the point of it, all this is, is as this technology evolves, we're going to be essentially interacting and it's not going to, it'll feel, uh, it won't feel one step removed anymore. It'll feel just like you're interacting with the internet, kind of like you're talking to an old friend who knows all your, essentially knows more about you than you probably, even your best friend mm -hmm. knows, or frankly, your best friend would want to know. That's right. So Julie, what does the metaverse really mean? Yes. So don't get stuck on the term metaverse. Replace that with uh, what we called the internet 20 years ago. We used to call it cyberspace. Boy, that sounded radical back then. But nobody actually uses that term cyberspace anymore. It was just a placeholder term for what is now just considered being online. For most people, the internet and being online come down to a handful of sites which they now visit regularly. Think about your own habits here. The top 10 websites that get 90% of the internet traffic are TikTok, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, Twitter, and WhatsApp. And for many people, their whole experience, depending on their age, like TikTok obviously is for mostly for kids. Um, Google's gonna be for everybody. Facebook is generally speaking for an older uh, demographic. Microsoft, I assume that's up there because of all, Microsoft's probably just a big catch-all for all their game, mm -hmm. big gaming products and whatnot. You know, you guys can kind of go through in your minds and think about it. Um, you know, the, there's only one retailer, it's called Amazon, and yeah. Netflix is still number seven. This was really fresh data, by the way. Uh, but the moral of the story is most people really only go to maybe two or three websites, and that's where they get all their information. Yeah. Um, it's not unusual for someone to get all their information and essentially just spend all their time on Facebook, for example. Yeah, and by the way, if you have any doubt about what we we're just going over, um, most of you have smartphones, and if you'll notice when you swipe up, your smartphone has memorized which apps you go to regularly and now makes that a shortcut for you. You didn't even have to create that. So, like, if I go to mine, I use WhatsApp to talk to, you know, kids stuff and our doctor and, you know. You're in WhatsApp groups. Yeah. I, I don't even have to, like, scroll through my phone to find the WhatsApp app. My iPhone is telling me, you use this all the time, so we're going to put it on your shortcuts. Well, the, it even gets weirder than that. So, if I already go to your computers or your phones, and if you've used Google before for a search, by the way, you should use something like DuckDuckGo because then there's no tracking of your search results, FYI. DuckDuckGo, crazy name, but it is makes it so that you get search results and none of your search results are attached to your ISP, so no one knows it was you that searched for whatever you search for. Um, but when you, if I, you're using Google, and if I already go and uh, go to your Google and I already search terms, uh, you know whatever the terms are, real estate coaching, real estate training, whatever it is, 
your results are going to be different than, say, for example, your neighbor's results. Because what's happening is the AI that is, uh, you know, studying what you put in, knows what you clicked on before, and is there curating your search results based on your previous um, behavior, basically. Mm -hmm. And all of these different search engines and all these different widgets are all essentially doing the same exact thing. So your, I mean, Facebook is notorious for uh, curating your news feed around what you clicked on or what yeah. you liked and things like that. So this is all stuff that's very interesting. Just Go ahead, that. Julie. Okay, so imagine no longer going to those particular sites using a keyboard and a screen, but instead using virtual reality. There will be multiple metaverses similar to your use of multiple websites today. Conceptually, that's how the metaverse will function, and eventually there will be a small handful of winners, probably fewer than five metaverses, that executed at a higher level and attracted the most users, kind of like our list that we just went through, right? There's a reason that Facebook won. More people used it. It was easier to use, etc. In the meantime, expect there to be many competing metaverses like there were many competing social networking sites. Now there's basically just Facebook. So those of you who are in EXP royalty, and you go to EXP, uh, EXP World, You are, are that is a metaverse. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you guys should go to YouTube and you should basically put EXP World, um, just put it in EXP World, and you're going to see what a real live metaverse wor uh, works like, so looks like. So when Julie and I got involved with EXP in um, 2000, early 2020, uh, we did not ever have any, we're not gamers and we didn't have any experience mm -hmm. with metaverses and, you know, we had to interact with this metaverse and definitely we were reluctant. Just like, oh, come on, can't we just call you? <laughs> right, exactly. What, can't we just make this old school and just do a conference call? But nope, you got to go to the metaverse on some for dealing with accounting or dealing with some other department. And you have an avatar. And here's the crazy thing. The first time I used it, I was shocked. And remember, not gamers. We are not gamers. Um, so we do not have some big love and acceptance of the shortcomings of technology and you know, nothing like that, but it was immersive and it was annoyingly so because <laughs> you were, you essentially were an avatar and then your avatar can walk around in this virtual world In this virtual world, then you can go to talk to um, somebody who's literally in accounting. You'll talk to their avatar and you can go to different. Now, how is that different than real life? Well, in real life, you pick up the phone or real life, you go to see somebody. Well, in the metaverse, you can do the exact same thing, but you can do it uh, in EXP World's case, just using a keyboard, a keyboard and a computer. Mm -hmm. I'm, and you can, I'm sure you can also use some sort of VR headset. But where we're going with all this is the technology right now, the best metaverse is people look like cartoons and not really great cartoons either. Nope. And the reason they do that is because essentially the technology has, uh, it's difficult for the technology, if not impossible, to render one-to-one -one human likeness. But guess what? That's all changing. I watched a video in preparation for this series of podcasts where it was showing, and this was a company that was making software. I'm trying to remember what company it was. It was one of the biggest gaming software companies. Some of you guys will know what it is. Put it in comments if you're watching on YouTube. And the video was I could not discern the difference. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. The shadows were perfect. The light was perfect. And it was in 4K. It was, it was in unbelievable. And so what the, the takeaway was is this company has developed the software that they're then supposedly going to license to other to companies making metaverses or obviously the companies making the metaverses are going to do their own version. Mm -hmm. So when you go to this metaverse in the future, and I'm foreshadowing uh, future shows here, you're going to have a, um, a again a VR headset, and the VR headset's not going to be like your Oculus, which is you know looks like goggles. It's going to be something much more comprehensive. Again, we'll talk about that more in an upcoming show. But you're also going to be wearing a full haptic bodysuit, a full suit that's going to cover your hands, your feet, the whole thing. Don't worry, it's going to be air conditioned and it's going to be cooled. And you're going to be able to walk through this metaverse. You're going to be able to look down, see your hands. It's going to look like your hand. You're going to be able to see another person, and they're going to look like a person. You're going to be able to feel the wind blowing on your body. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I know. This member and I was telling you we, I was having a hard time putting all this together. And so then I had to explore it and understand it. All this technology already exists. And guess what? This technology has existed for a long time, but there hasn't been consumer demand, and the technology hasn't been there to deliver it. Now there is. That's the reason all these things that we're talking about – uh, sharing with you guys, they're all going to come to fruition faster than you can possibly imagine. Way faster than it took for us to go from, you know, Web 1.0 when Julie and I were, you know, was AOL, you've got mail. <laughs> you know, back when dial up was, woohoo, I got it for five, when five uh, minutes, right. you know. Yeah. When, what was that company in Columbus, Ohio? Micro CompuServe. Comp, no, there was, was CompuServe. It? Yeah, maybe it was CompuServe. 
Yeah, Whatever. Know. It's terrible. Yeah, it was copy yeah. yeah. But they were groundbreaking, remember? I know. It was so radical. But, but now we're going to go. So that was over, a, a, let's say, from, you know, 15 years that took. And now you're seeing this metaverse technology. It's been around for a long time. But this meta, like EXP Worlds and, uh, you know, EXP bought Verbella and they bought them. And Verbella was, uh, you know, in existence for I don't know how many years before EXP bought them. But the moral of the story is look at, for example, EXP. EXP Realty is an international real estate company. I believe that EXP, as of the end of first quarter, is going to have um, essentially doing brokering real estate in 21 different countries. Mm -hmm. So now I want you to think about that for a second. EXP, you become an EXP agent. You're going to be part of this metaverse. It's going to be as immersive as I've just described. You're going to be able to do real estate deals or participate in real estate transactions all over planet Earth. You're going to be able to take somebody on a walkthrough on a house in Tuscany. You're guys, what's happening is going to happen um, whether you like it or not, but like it because it's going to allow you to service people at a higher level in more, obviously, locations around the world. Now, Julie mentioned that there's going to be multiple metaverses. Don't be intimidated by that. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to have – this is the con concept anyway. None of this is proved out yet, but this is what people are theorizing. You're going to have one avatar – the avatar will look like you. Now, if you don't, by the way, you can modify your avatar. So if you choose to have your avatar look, let's just say a little bit, you know, taller, skinnier or More whatever. Svelte. Exactly. <laughs> no problem. You can yeah. do that. And there already are companies that will take a render of you, or I'm sorry, a picture of you and render it to make it look like an avatar. And all this technology is coming again. We're going to talk about this on future shows. Uh, but this is going to be allow you to, in the morning, you're, oh, here's another thing I thought was trippy. Mm -hmm. So you guys are thinking, well, everyone's just going to be – well, at least I was thinking. Everyone would just basically be a big fat sloth sitting in their right. in their Barco loungers mm -hmm. with their big, you know, uh, haptic metaverse suits Slobber on. Slobber dripping out of the side of their mouth. Exactly. Yeah. I think there was a comedy movie made about that. Do you remember that one? I do. I, I can't it remember the gross, name of it. was gross, but it yeah. was funny. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so um, <laughs> what's going to happen actually is with these haptic suits, you're actually going to be able to, you know, walk up the Eiffel Tower, but your body actually is going to feel – the you know essentially the gravity and require the effort to walk up this, the, the all the steps, steps and the wind blowing in right. your hair you're gonna feel it but sun it's not, on your face you're not just gonna watch your avatar walking up steps your legs are actually going to be putting in the motion necessary for you to walk up the steps because the haptic suits are going to make your muscles work as if they were walking up the steps. You guys get it? Yeah, which so, makes us a lot closer to the Matrix, right? When he was learning how to fight or yes. he was, you know, all that kind but of thing. But the difference with the Matrix, mm -hmm. Julie, is mm -hmm. he was sitting in a chair right. while he was doing it in his head. Yes, but what, now you'll actually be standing up making the actions and doing things like that. And exactly. I, to me, as kind of an education connoisseur, I can imagine, like, I, I've always wanted to learn how to play the violin. How cool would that be? Yeah, well, If you, it's actually, like, showing me, that's better than just watching somebody explain it to me. You mentioned the Matrix. So yeah. in the Matrix, he was able to plug in and learn Kung Fu or learn how yeah. to fly a helicopter or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, I was watching and reading a lot about how the metaverse, through the, all this technology mm -hmm. we're talking about, will allow someone to have advanced learning. Now, they're not just plugging your brain in and you're not just basically picking up the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go through the motions. Sure. But if you're, say, for example, wanting to learn Kung Fu, mm -hmm. you're going to find yourself in a dojo. You're going to find yourself with mm -hmm. a dojo master and you're going to be actually going through the motions with your body standing in your living room wearing the haptic yeah. suit immersive. and getting immersive instant yeah. feedback. Now, I want you to think about, let's say, for example, you have a job that is a uh, requires potential physical harm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're working in some sort of plant that has some all kinds of you know, just all kinds of sure. threat vectors everywhere mm -hmm. you look. Mm -hmm. Well, before you actually set your foot on the floor, mm -hmm. you can actually go and have training using what we're describing so that they will train you how to actually do this correctly so you don't end up having to learn and make mistakes and potentially hurt yourself or other people doing the actual thing. Yeah. And don't you think you'll learn a lot faster, a lot more efficiently? I mean, I, I think about – I my brain, of course, is always trying to make these – um, corollaries between the real world and this metaverse you're talking about. And I, and I was thinking as we were writing this together that, you know, learning Spanish has been a lot faster for me having to because I've been immersed in it, right? right? But what if I was immersed completely by plugging in, by having to interact, by having that intensity of experience – and you can, you can apply that to so many different things. Well, so in our business, right, mm -hmm. we teach agents how to proactively lead, generate, pre-qualify, present, negotiate, yeah. close, right? Mm -hmm. So what if we could uh, take this metaverse technology mm -hmm. and we could have them, so they're in their haptic suits right. and they're wearing their goggles 
and um, they're sitting in front of a seller, and they're actually a real, and it's one for one. Let's sure. just say it's indistinguishable. You know you're in the metaverse. You know you're in a sim. But the reality of it is, is your body's going to react the same. You're going to have to go through the emotional roller coaster of actually presenting, you know, the Harris listing presentation for the first time. Mm -hmm. But you can practice it. You can then practice it on yeah. that sim sitting across from you. You can hear you. objections. You can right. have to react in real time. I think that, the, you know, educationally, I'm very excited about this because I think we can advance a lot faster. Yeah. Well, it, how about homeschool? Yeah. How for about sure. travel? Absolutely. How about education? Mm -hmm. And and yes, and we're going to talk about this ever so briefly because Julie wouldn't let me write another <laughs> section on it. This is going the first, and some oh, of you yeah. guys who have, you know, I know what you guys are there thinking. You go. The first technology that's actually going to evolve, or the first industry that's going to evolve this technology, I should say, is porn. And there are, and basically, this guy, again, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about these uh, full body suits. Uh, they already said their biggest customers are, are going to be the porn well, of industry. Course. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I mean, somebody's got to, somebody's got to innovate first. I I believe uh, that I read that the porn industry was also the first to do things like online payments and you know merchant services and all, all of these things. So you know, well, whatever. Well, you read because I wrote it and you edited yeah, it. I think probably. But the first one of the yeah. first registered websites was actually. That's right. So that's how it works, guys. A lot of time I'll write the content <laughs> and Julie edits <laughs> off the good stuff. Just so you know. But uh, I do remember this, yeah. but I was because I researched it. I wanted mm -hmm. to find what the first registered website was. Mm -hmm. It was a porn site. Of course. And I even wrote down the name of the porn site. And you deleted uh, it, yeah. didn't you? Probably. <laughs> I, I don't like those kinds of links making it into our stuff. You, you know, that is funny. That's I true. Know. It's good that you removed it because if that would have made it into our <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Can you imagine? And especially after my typo yesterday when we were talking about uh, 1 800 Home Hotline and I mistakenly let the, left the M out and it was 1 800 Home Hotline. <laughs> That's no bueno. Man, we could have picked up a whole new audience. <laughs> I know, That's we probably crazy. did. So listen, guys, be excited about this. We're going to, I was going to call this um, the metaverse for dummies, but I don't, you know, that's A, condescending, B, kind of snotty, C, maybe too factual. <laughs> so, you know. We'll all learn it together, We're guys. all learning it together is the point. And uh, this is evolving technology. N there's no, like, this is how it's going to be. It's going to be where consumer demand is driving this, which is really exciting, honestly. And, and you know, be excited. Be open-minded. If Look, some of you are closed-minded. Some of you are overly skeptical. And that's great. Okay? Stay on that stance. But don't wait too long. Just have the uh, ability to think open-minded about what we're presenting to you and then set aside your skepticism. Look, Julie and I don't want to be spending our time in the metaverse all the time anyway either. Mm -hmm. And yet, and yet, how many of you are spending hours per week on Facebook? So are you really telling me, you know, that you're so, I'm never going to do that metaverse thing. It's not for me. Well, and yet you're sp spending all this time on YouTube or all this time on Facebook or all this time on these other essentially virtual realities all this is is the next evolution of it. It's fascinating, isn't it? And people younger than us, we look at our eight-year-old, Zoe, who plays roadblocks all the time. Did I say it right? Roblox. Am it's I getting okay. it wrong? It's not roadblocks. Like there's a roadblock in your way on the way to the store. What is it? Roblox, like robots and oh, blocks. Okay. Well, it is the worst interface Either I've ever way, seen. Either way, it's experience. really dumb. It's terrible. <laughs> the user experience is awful, and Ugh. she adores it. I know. I've been kind of studying. Well, we try to keep her off of it, but... I, I have my theory that it's because, you know, she gets to play with friends. I get that. But they also get to kind of create their own story and they get to kick doors open and see what's on the other side and build steps and things like that. So I think some of it is sort of controlling your own destiny, which I can see also relates to this whole metaverse concept that you can go like, you know, maybe you've always wanted to be blonde and you can have a blonde avatar. Maybe you want to try on an Armani suit and you want to, you know, outfit yourself that I way. Since you brought it up, I was going to try to wrap up, but you're actually bringing up something that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. So where I got stuck was I don't, you know, all this metaverse talk and it goes back to non-fungible tokens and crypto and all this stuff. It sounds way too nerdy for me and it doesn't sound practical. Uh, but then I started to understand how real businesses and real brands are starting to make money in the metaverse. And I'll give you an example. Ralph Lauren is essentially opening up a store in the metaverse, and I forget which metaverse they're building it in. Uh, building, as in they hired an architect to build an online Ralph Lauren or metaverse-based, uh, you know, Ralph Lauren store. But then I got it. So what's going to happen is, is there'll be places, and there already are. Say, for example, I'll use EXP World as an sure. example. Mm -hmm. So EXP World, there's 73,000 EXP agents as of today, something like that. 
Uh, it's the fastest growing real estate company in the world, and it's in you know 21 different countries at the end of first quarter. Let's say, for example, EXP wanted to have uh, an event online in EXP world, which they which do frequently, they do every day. right? And let's say they wanted to invite all 21 or 71,000, and let's mm -hmm. say you know 50,000 show up. So you have 50,000 people in the EXP world in this conference hall, mm -hmm. and these are agents. These are agents that are showing up in their avatars. When you're experiencing this, you're sitting in the audience. There's people all the way around you. There's people up on stage. They're presenting. There's a slide show there might be a video it's as if you were really there but you're there through your avatar again go online go to YouTube put in exp world you'll see what I'm talking about now again the technology itself the avatars themselves look like um, you know cartoon characters but that's all changing so don't get stuck on that don't say it looks like this so it's just gonna be a gimmick it's not now let's say for example there's a lunch break right so let's say this conference runs for you know five six hours and there's a lunch break for 30 minutes and everyone's washing, walking out of the hall, you know, avatars are leaving. You of course could leave your avatar there if you wanted to, but then somebody says, well, at break, there's going to be a conference or there's going to be another meeting happening here. There's another meeting happening there. So you walk out of this conference hall and the first thing you run into is a booth from your favorite pizza place and your fa and they know, you know, it's going to know the AI will know what your favorite pizza place is based on where you order pizza from every day or hopefully not every day. And there's going to be an ad there from Bob's Pizza. See, Bob's got a pizza joint now. <laughs> moving on up. He's moving on up. Okay. Um, and by the way, Bob's the one that started 1-800-HO-Hotline. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So anyway, so there's a, an ad yeah. for a pizza place right there. And it's, you know, Bob's Pizza. And it says right there, order in the next five minutes. We prom guarantee your deliver in, you know, 30 minutes or less or the pizza is free. You go there and you, you, you are able to directly interface a really fast one-click checkout like you do with uh, – Amazon, uh, you know, basically, and you could then order the pizza and the pizza then shows up in your real life at your real door and goes in your real mouth. You guys get it? So what's going to happen are these brands are going to be interacting. So when you hear all these people talking about the metaverse, they're explaining it poorly for the most part. They're explaining it so that it, it doesn't really appeal to enough people. Like I'm going to go to Ralph Lauren and buy digital clothes. Well, you can because Ralph Lauren will be selling digital clothes for your avatar. But the reality of it is, is you're going to the Ralph Lauren store and you're going to look at whatever the, you know, what would it be now? The spring fashions are going to be. And those spring fashions are going to be delivered to your door after you try them on. How are you going to try them on, you say? Aha! Uh -huh. Remember, you're in avatars. You've loaded up, hypothetically, your actual body with dimensions. You've taken pictures of yourself. This technology is available now. Do you guys know you can get glass pre glasses prescriptions right now? You can go to an online uh, a, a optometrist right now and get a glasses prescription. He can't check you for glaucoma and whatnot, but you can do it and get your actual reading mm -hmm. You know, all the way down to bifocals. You can do that online now. Now. Well, you can use your phone. You can have your phone take pictures of you, put in a few measurements, what's your ideal well, pant size. Well, it's even better than that. Apps will measure it for you. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then what's going to happen is you're then that your that information is going to be remembered as part of your avatar's profile. You walk into Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren is going, and you're going to say, I like this, I like this, I like this. And then they're going to show you pictures of you wearing the clothes. And if you're anything like my wife, you're going to hit <laughs> buy, buy, now. buy, 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 buy. <laughs> Right? Buy now. And then it's going to be delivered to your real house and you're going to really wear it. Right. In addition to maybe outfitting your avatar with their digital outfit. Yeah, exactly. Pretty cool. I mean, we're going to talk about all this, but this is the, the, this is the, um, this is the link between this online metaverse place uh, world, right? Or metaverses and the real world. So there, this is where I want you guys to be. Because this is where you're, this is where you're going to make your money and help people. Because there are going to be just like there are people right now that spend. Look at you know Facebook, billions of dollars per year on uh, Facebook ads. There'll be billions of dollars spent in these various metaverses for all the exact same reasons. Because that's where the eyeballs are. That's where the people are. That's where people are going to go every single day. They're going to plug into the metaverse. They're going to go there. They're going to go to their conferences. Mm -hmm. They're going to do what they do. So if I were in real estate right now, and by the way, I would not be surprised at all, wink, wink, if EXP is the first company in the world to start brokering online mm -hmm. metaverse property. That is sure. obviously going to be a natural, normal thing for the only truly, um, you know, metaverse-based real estate company to start selling metaverse-based real estate in the different metaverses. And, yeah, because metaverse is not weird to EXP. No, it's like not. Like it is to some of the. Well, EXP world is a metaverse, and so it. there's and there's, there's like maybe ten different metaverses, and they all have got you know 
metaverse land for sale and you can broker that you can make money on that people are doing that you can then go and you know there was a story of um snoop dog you know mm -hmm. the rap guy he bought his he bought some big parcel in one of the metaverses i forget which one it is and then all the property around you know virtual property all the property around him started selling for like tens of thousands and then you know hundreds of thousands of dollars because people knew that snoop dog was going to be having a lot of you know engagement with his followers mm -hmm. in his uh snoop dog metaverse house audience. and then as soon as they walked out or as soon as they walked in they're going to be walking past what could be like snoop dog t-shirt store snoop Sneakers. dog tennis shoe store yeah. you guys get the idea this is how it's all going to evolve be part of the conversation so we're having fun with this hopefully you guys are having fun with this as well so we mentioned exp a few times today obviously julie and i are very involved with exp realty if you are in interested in becoming an exp agent and you're looking for a sponsor that's going to be proactive in your success at exp realty not yet chosen one julie and i are formally applying for the job of being your exp sponsor do text me directly at 512-758-0206 512-758-0206. If you're just getting started and you're just looking for information on EXP, text the letters EXP to 47372. Text the letters EXP to 47372. And remember when you text, message and data rates may apply. So hopefully you guys are liking this. Remember to like us on, um, what am I supposed to say? All these things you're supposed to say. YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? I think I'm getting this right. Uh, and give if you're on iTunes or Stitcher or any of these other uh, listing devices. Please do give us a five-star review. We certainly appreciate that. And uh, yeah, guys, we're going to pick up where we left off tomorrow and we're going to uh, left off today tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start getting into the weeds more on how to actually take action on all these things. So you guys can be an early mover on what will be web 3.0 without frankly wasting a bunch of time. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow.